This is Math 125 Pivity Exam 3 Review, and I'm Dr. Tatiana Kodorowski, and in this video I will talk about evaluating uh, inverse trigonometric functions. So it is important to remember that trigonometric functions take angles to ratios, whereas inverse trigonometric functions take ratios to angles. So our first example is going to be an evaluation. We're going to evaluate the inverse trig function of negative radical 3 over 2. So we're asked to evaluate this. So the important thing to remember are the ranges and domains of all the trig functions, of all the inverse trig functions. So inverse sine is going to have the following domains and ratio and ranges. So inverse sine is going to go from negative one to one to the range of negative pi over two to pi over two. What does this mean? This means that the inverse sine function is going to take a ratio between negative one and one and it's gonna spit out an angle between negative pi over two and pi over two. The it's not relevant to this problem, but I'll write down the other ones. The inverse cosine function is going to take a value from negative 1 and 1, a ratio, and it's going to map it to an angle from 0 to pi. Inverse tangent function is going to take any value from any real number, and it's going to produce an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Remembering the domains and ranges of inverse functions is very useful. So what does this mean? This means what we need to evaluate, that sine inverse of negative 3 over 2, negative, ne negative radical 3 over 2, is some number between negative 1 and 1, it's some ratio, and the inverse sine function is going to spit out some angle. What we can think about it whenever we're, we're tasked with this evaluation, we can think about this problem in a slightly inverse manner. We can take signs of both sides and we can think about it like this. We can ask, we can ask ourselves, what angle theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 will give sine of theta the value negative 3 over 2. So we can phrase the question this way. So when you answering the question, what's the inverse sine of some number, of some ratio, you need to ask yourself, the related question, so what angle theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 will give sine theta the value negative 3 over 2? Now there's several things that can help you. First of all, you know the, the signs of the sine function. Signs of the sine function are positive in the first and second quadrant, and they're negative in this quadrant. And we also need something between negative pi and pi over 2. So we know that our angle, if it's negative, and it must be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, it must lie in this quadrant. And then what else is going to help us is going to help us either the 30, 60, 90 triangle or the unit circle, whatever you prefer. If you remember that point on the unit circle, that's going to correspond to this angle. So here we have the point one half comma negative radical three over two. On the unit circle, sine is the y value, and this angle, this angle, this angle theta, is precisely negative pi over three. So we can conclude that sine of negative 1 of negative radical 3 over 2 is going to give us the angle of negative 
pi over 3. Or negative 60 degrees. And this is the final answer. You can also use the special triangle to get the answer. So you know the answer must be negative. So you can just draw the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remember, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. And on the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have 1, 2, radical 3. Now, in order to get the absolute value of the radical 3 over 2, then the angle needs to be 60 degrees. And you remember 60 degrees is pi over 3. And this is another way to get it, that the angle, uh, the inverse sine of negative radical 3 over 2 must be negative pi over 3 degrees. So you can either use the unit circle or you can use one of the special triangles, but remembering the domains and ranges of the inverse sine functions is important. In this next example, we're going to compose the following. We're asked to evaluate the following composition. So this is an inverse sine function of a regular function a regular trig function. So we need to evaluate inverse sine of cosine of pi over 6. Well, whatever we input into inverse sine, the output is going to be an angle. And that's in these composition questions, um, the very first thing they need to figure out is my answer going to be a ratio, the answer is going to be an angle. The most outside function here is the inverse sine function, and inverse sine functions take ratios to angles. So again, there's several ways of doing this. So the question can be rephrased as follows. Um, it can be rephrased as follows. What angle theta, again, remember the domains and ranges of the inverse sine function, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is such that sine of this angle equals to cosine of pi over 6. Okay? Well, you can use a co-function identity, or you can, again, refer to the unit circle. What is cosine of pi over 6? Cosine of pi over 6, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So another thing, you have to be very comfortable going back and forth between degrees and radians. And you can get the information that, well, cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse is radical 3 over 2. So cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. So now you ask yourselves, what, what angle of theta is there such that angle of theta is radical 3 over 2? Well, the answer is that, again, you can look at your 30, 60, 90 triangle. If I want to get that my angle is opposite over hypotenuse radical 3 over 2, my angle needs to be 60 degrees. So theta here is, must be pi over 3. So sine of pi over 3 will give you the same ratio as cosine of pi over 6. They are co-function identities, and that's another important thing to remember. So the final answer here is that sine inverse of cosine of pi over 6 is going to be pi over 3. Again, another way to view that is that cosine of pi over 6 equals sine of theta. What must that theta be? That theta must be pi over 3. And so this is the final answer.
For our next problem, we're going to look at number 48. This is another composition of a trig function and an inverse trig function. This time we are faced with sine of inverse secant of 5 thirds equals what? We need to evaluate this. So one way to do this, and not the most economical way, is to plug into your calculator what is the secant, inverse secant of 5 thirds. The calculator is going to give you some very ugly number. That ugly number is going to correspond to an angle. And then you're going to take sine of that angle and get a value. You're going to get a very ugly number, which may or may not be marked correct. One way to do this completely without a calculator is again make the following reservation observation. So what do I want? I want sine of theta, sine of some angle theta. So my final answer should be a ratio. Well, what is this? Well, theta is some angle such that the inverse secant gives me 5 thirds. Well, what does that mean? That means that secant of this angle is 5 thirds. Well, wait a minute, I can draw a triangle. This is going to be some right triangle. And all I know is that I have my angle of theta here, and I know that secant of it is 5 thirds. That's all I know about it. That means that the ratio of the side, so if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So this means the hypotenuse over the adjacent in this right triangle must be 5 and 3. Well, the ratios of the sides of this right triangle look familiar. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And again, I can obtain that this leg of the triangle must be 4. Again, I don't know what theta is. I don't care what this ratio is. I don't I don't care what theta is. I just know the secant of that theta. Well, I don't need to know that theta. I only need to know sine of theta. Well, what is sine of this theta? Sine of this theta must be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of this theta must be 4 fifths. And that is it. That's how I get my answer. I get my answer that sine of secant inverse of 5 thirds comes out to 4 fifths, and I did not need to use any calculator. All I needed to do was draw a triangle and look at the ratios of the sides of the legs of the triangles and the hypotenuse of the triangle. So again, whenever you need to compose a trig function, an inverse trig function, always remember the domains of the inverse trig functions and the ranges of the inverse trig functions. And whenever you need to do a composition, ask yourself, is my answer supposed to be a ratio or is my answer supposed to be an angle? In this example, your final answer was supposed to be a ratio. And although you used an angle theta in your computations how to figure out that that ratio is 4 fifths, you did not actually need to know what that angle theta is going to be.